Good afternoon to all members. Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you all. Uh, my name is Sierra Mallet. I am a Canadian citizen, fourth generation. I've been raised in a society who fights for the rights of every person, their speech and their religion. We are a kind people, a just people, a helping people. The Immigration and Refugee Board, along with the Canada Border Services Agency, have failed what we stand for in the case of my husband. We have not been able to have legal counsel. He is currently detained at a holding centre and scheduled for removal on June the 11th. He is a citizen of the Gambia and West Africa. Annual Report 2012, Amnesty International. Gambia continues to restrict freedom of expression, government opponents, human rights defenders and journalists were arbitrarily arrested and detained. Torture and other ill treatment were carried out by security forces and there were unresolved cases of enforced disappearances. One example, we had some activists distributing anti-government t-shirts to end the dict dictatorship in West Africa. They were detained and arrested. One has been uh, sentenced to 30 years. I'm here today to urge any member, any media, anybody for assistance. I need your help. We have to stop his removal at any opportunity that we can for at least an opportunity for a pre-removal risk assessment. Mohammed is a good man. He is an educated man. He is in opposition of the government where he lives. He has family there. He fears for them. I will be where he is. We simply cannot go to the Gambia. We cannot step foot there with this removal. I'm already organizing a campaign to stop his deportation on the violation of his human rights for asylum in Canada. I have a petition that is growing, and I have his friends and his family from the UK military sending me their witness statements being notarized by their leader. I am contacting media sources for assistance, including Freedom Newspaper, operating out of the Gambia. This is about human rights, this is about justice, this is about Canada, and this is about Canada fulfilling their promise to assist people in need of protection and show what we are supposed to stand for. Thank you, I need some help. Um, not knowing the individual facts of the case, I can't speak to the case. However, um, we're deporting people who should be deporting people. Um, there's cases that they're saying we're not going to deport them until the situation there changes and they're holding in advance. Uh, and if the situation changes until your hearing is done, then they will deport you. There's certain countries in the world that human rights are gone out the window. There's part countries that are part of the G8 and the G20, the, the G20 that have absolutely no human rights. And you will hear us advocate that if you want to be part of the G8 or the G20 or you want to deal with them, you must respect human rights freedom of religion, and freedom of the press. Unfortunately, they <coughs> are part of the G20 and they're not respecting those, those appearances. So I would like to, uh, for being uh, myself, uh, the office from Toronto, to sort of speak to you afterwards so we can see if we can provide any assistance to you. So I'm reluctant to speak publicly about a particular case or ask you questions that I don't think are pertinent to the rest. So, yes, I appreciate it. Okay. That. And I also see some other individuals that says no deportations to Iran. Well, I haven't been to Iran in 2003 after Kazmi, and unfortunately I couldn't get a visitor visa under my Canadian passport, and I had to uh, get a visitor visa as a Greek businessman, quote unquote, in order to see in Iran. I got to tell you, I went outside of in jail. This is not a crazy situation, and Canada should really make good consideration before they deport somebody back to Iran. There's people that should be deported back to Iran, people that are part of this regime and they're not being deported. 